guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nays and Nays, for those of you who are new to the channel, or who just happened to stumble across this video. And I post some videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So as the title says above, this is going to be yet again another book review, and this is going to be for Harvest of Rubies by Tessa Afshar. And I am so excited about talking with you guys about this book did that make sense i hope it did um but again these book reviews i'm gonna try to keep them under for two minutes because i know the last one was a little long um so i'm not gonna give too much spoiler wise but this is a part of a duology so the first book is harvest of rubies and the second book is harvest of gold i will talk about harvest of gold in a few weeks um in a separate video but we're focusing on this book and this is the second book that tessa has written in her old testament kind of series of books and this one is so good this is probably the most comical one of all the books that she's written this one definitely gives me a lot more laughter, a lot more joy, and just cracks me up every time I read it. And when I think about the characters, I laugh. So, um, yeah, I'm going to read the back of this book, and then we're going to quickly, briefly talk about it. Yeah. So, on the back, it says, Remarkable talent threatens to cloud a life. The prophet Nehemiah's cousin has been catapulted into the center of the Persian court, working long hours, rubbing elbows with royalty, and becoming the queen's favorite scribe. Not bad for a woman living in a man's world, but a devastating past has left Sarah believing that God doesn't love her and her achievements are the measure of her worth, a measure she can never quite live up to. Darius Passagarde is accustomed to having his way. A wealthy, admired aristocrat, the last thing he expects is an arranged marriage to the queen scribe, an intelligent woman who scorns him. Can two such different people help one another overcome the idols that bind them? So that is what this book is about and um off the back this is biblical fiction it is based off of the book of nehemiah and um it talks about nehemiah if he had a cousin that just happened to be the scribe to the queen and it is very very funny i am a huge fan of the prophet nehemiah in this book he spent so much so much so much great knowledge like in wisdom and just everything is just like Oh, I just love it. I 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 just, I love Nehemiah in this book. I, you know, I've, I have not studied the book of Nehemiah myself. I have not. But reading this book definitely sparked an interest in me learning more about the prophet Nehemiah and what he had to say and all that, the prophecies and stuff that he spoke. So this was so good. Like every time Nehemiah popped up, he was given some intelligent words of wisdom to Sarah and Darius. Um, So let's talk about Miss Sarah. Sarah is the main female protagonist in this story, and she is a girl that has dealt with some heartache. Um, if I'm not mistaken, she lost her mother. Uh, yeah, her mother died, if I'm not mistaken, or did she leave away? Mm -mm. I think her mother died. Yeah, her mother died when she was seven, um, and her father pretty much ignored her. Um, pr pr pretty much ignored her. Um, he was always working, and... Um, she was sort of kind of raised by her aunt and her aunt always tried to make her this like girly girl but she really just wanted the love of her father so she tried so hard to do things that her father wanted so eventually she learned to read and write and her father was excited about that it was kind of like something that they could bond with so she started feeling like she had to do things in order to get her father's love and affection because when she did things that's when she got the love and affection so she grew up with this mindset that i have to perform in order to be loved we know god is not a god that uh, you know deals with you performing to be loved he loves you regardless um but that's something she dealt with when she was really young at the age of seven so fast forward um she ends up working for the queen as a scribe which one i thought that was so cool i'm not sure if they really did have scribe female scribes back in the day i'm not sure but i thought it was awesome that they talked about it and this does deal with the persian persian court so keep that in mind um so i thought that was completely awesome um sarah is very sheltered like i said she didn't have her mom her aunt tried to raise her but she didn't want her aunt to really raise her she really spent time with her cousin the prophet nehemiah and her dad and they were both um i think they both worked in the castle in the castle in in the court as scribes if i'm not mistaken don't quote me i know pro the prophet nehemiah is obviously a prophet not a scribe but i think her father was can't remember but um Sarah is sassy. Like, she's very sassy, very comical. She makes me laugh. She's very sheltered, so she doesn't know much about becoming or being a woman. She do And when I say a woman, I mean, like, 
femininity she doesn't know much about femininity <laughs> and um when she meets Darius for the first time, it involved a lion. I'm going to just leave it at that. That scene, like, was funny to me, with how they met her and Darius. Um, but Darius, I love him. He he irritates me. He reminds me of Salmon from Pearl in the Sand. Because he does some things that just doesn't... It doesn't make sense to me. He's real petty. He a petty one. Um, but it's cute how they kind of, like, interact together. Um, there was a scene that will forever make me laugh. Anytime I think of this book, I think of that one scene where Sarah has to... She's basically set up to marry Darius by the queen. The queen name is Demaspia. And the king at this time, if I'm not mistaken, is Xerxes' son. Um, Arach to, I, I don't know how to say the name, but um, Xerxes' son is now king, and this is after... Xerxes and um, Esther, I guess, have passed away. So his son is king. And, um, you know, Demaspia, which is a queen, has set her up to marry um, Darius. And, you know, Sarah de didn't want to be married. She wanted to just work, work with everything. She felt like she had to perform. That was what she wanted. So she didn't realize who she was marrying. But, you know, as a reader, you kind of put two and two together with her and Darius meeting, and then all of a sudden she's going to get married off. And it's the queen's doing. The queen is making her get married. Um, let me just say, the queen mother in this book is annoying. She real like, ooh. Her name is Amestrius. Um, um, she evil. She's evil. She's an evil stepmother. I'm just going to say that. She's evil. But um, the queen mother, there was a situation with the queen mother and the queen, and um, lots of stupidity going on. I mean, when I say petty... Petty. It even included some of the um the concubines. Can't remember which concubine it was, but there there was just some straight up craziness going on, and um Demaspia had made um Sarah figure out what happened. Sarah figured it out, so to reward her, she was basically marrying her off to Darius, who was her cousin or her husband's cousin, and um the wedding night scene was just funny to me because. Like I told you guys, Sarah is very sheltered. She doesn't know much about beauty. She didn't really pay attention to what her aunt was teaching her about being a woman. And um, the night of her wedding, she was supposed to get made up by her handmaiden. I'm trying to remember her handmaiden's name. Perry. Pari. Because um, um, they, they have something else, but I'm going to say Pari. Basically, something happened with Pari's father. And, um, you know, her father was sick or something like that. So... Sarah told her to go and to take care of her father. So, and Sarah telling her that Sarah now had to get herself ready for her wedding night. And she looked a hot mess with her makeup and her hair and just a wet dog. And just, it was comical. But in doing that, she was a laughing stock of her, of her wedding. And that kind of turned off Darius because Darius thought it was a setup on her end. Because they originally met when he saved her with the whole lying situation and um he now initially has this kind of like hatred towards her excuse me my battery is dying um he immediately has this like dislike and hatred toward her um but he doesn't understand that it's not that she did it on purpose it's just that sarah is just not aware and unfortunately sarah is one of those women who just she's not aware of her surroundings she's not aware of the stupid thing that she does which makes it much more funny but um you know, you see the two of them go back and forth, falling for each other, but not wanting to be together, but wanting to be together, but not knowing how to express their feelings, and then having problems and issues and arguments, and it's just so, so... It's a lot of angst. It's a lot of angst. A lot of you wanting them to be together, but they're playing game type stuff. And, um... The romance and the build-up of the romance is amazing. Now, I love this book. I rave about this. Not as often as Pearl in the Sand, because Pearl in the Sand has my heart, but this definitely would be, like, my favorite comical story from her. Now, it's not completely funny, but it's funny in that um, there are a lot more funnier moments and a lot more snarkiness between Sarah and Darius, because they both petty. They both petty. Like, petty. But, um, it's, it's a beautifully written story. Um, so... You know, Darius is learning to love, and Sarah is learning that it's not about you performing to do and get the love. So, I'm just going to read some of my favorite quotes, I guess. Okay, so the first one I'm going to read is on page 26, and um, it's 26 and 27. So, who is this speaking? This is, th this is the prophet Nehemiah. So, he says, um, there is no chance at work here, my dear. This is a door that the Lord holds open for you. Walk through it. 
he who has called shall also equip everything you lack shall be provided and for me I can kind of relate to it now because um, I just had to walk through the doors of just what God opened up for me as far as being an evangelist. And there's nothing I can do. I can't run away from it. I have to do it. Um, and he'll equip me and provide all the things that I need to excel in the call. Um, and then he goes on to say to Sarah, he said, you may fail. I cannot deny it. But if you go through life making every decision based on what is safest, you will look back one day and discover that you have missed out on the best. Allowing fear to run your life will rob you of your future. And that right there was a smack in the face for me because I used to allow fear to stop me from doing a lot of things. Um, but, you know, fear has, fear is a very strong weapon from the enemy. He uses it very, very wisely. Um, but then on page 83, you have a quote, another one from Nehemiah. He says, child, trust God. He would not have placed you in this position without a reason. And again, it reminds me that, you know, God is going to, he doesn't do things without purpose everything he does is for purpose we might not understand the purpose excuse me i kicked the camera but um we might not understand the purpose but everything is for purpose and we have to wait for him to rebuild that and give us the revelation of the purpose but however we as humans we don't understand it we get irritated and we try to do things on our own which always fails um the next quote that i want to talk about is on page 269 and um this is sarah thinking and speaking to herself in her mind she says i had built my own measures of worth and acceptability. They were false. They destroyed my peace. It dawned on me just how doggedly I served these measures. I served them with more fierce determination than I served God. And for me, it kind of reminds me that we as people, we tend to have these own, our own kind of thoughts and concepts in our mind about what love is and what it means to be acceptable and what it means to perform. And we then beat ourselves upside the head to live by those thoughts when our thoughts are not the thoughts of god god thinks differently so what i'm gonna do quickly is just read the review that i wrote um because y'all yeah, know these videos be all over the place so i put oh my 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 this is exactly why i love tessa abshaw's writing this gave me many feels there were tears laughter happiness anger sadness everything in between tessa takes so much care into creating her characters be they fictional or actual people from the bible her use of scripture pulls you in and the sound biblical wisdom shared makes you perfect personally reflect harvest of rubies is without a doubt a perfect read so like i said the story follows sarah who is the cousin of the prophet nehemiah sarah has never felt loved or been shown affection since the time of her mother's death she grows up believing that her talents and approval are her worth sarah was a strong stubborn girl that she was <laughs> um and she was definitely the kind of person um you would have considered to be like a depressed workaholic because she definitely had her moments of depression but she definitely had to work 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 because she felt like her work was her worth um and her value but we need to understand that work and work does not have to do with your value especially to god your value is you and your faith your faith is your value um so she viewed herself as worthless never fully understanding her value she pulled away from god and struggled to keep her own path lighted she taught me so much and revealed so much about myself as i read the book which is true um it's not that i thought i had to perform but i thought that my value were in other things instead of my faith um so that's that and then we have darius who's an aristocrat um and his whole family background and stuff like that was a little crazy but um He's her arranged husband, and he seemed like a very uptight man, but he was very much soft-spoken and sweet. Um, I love learning about his mother, who was a Jew. Darius was half Persian and half Jew, which added some dynamics to the story as well. But um, I enjoyed seeing him grow as well and let go of his own ideas to move forward with his life. He was just as stubborn as Sarah, so when you got two stubborn people together, that's some angst, all right? Romantically, some angst. Um, I said I love the way he viewed um, marriage and love. He was a sweet, loving, caring, and protective man. And, um, yeah. So, the romance was perfection. Slow burn. Angsty. Drama. Just everything in between. Everything you want in a good, strong romance that starts off kind of like enemies to lovers type thing. I love it. And that's pretty much how I see a lot of Tessa's books goes. They're like enemies to lovers. But she pulls it off so well. Um... So, Sarah was not set on marrying, and she made a fool of herself. Like I said, she didn't do it purposely. She just didn't know what the heck she was doing. So, she looked a hot mess. She looked like Boo Boo the Fool at her wedding day. <laughs> um, I said they both struggled at the beginning with their feelings, but after months apart, because he was... He was petty. Like, the things he did kind of pissed me off. 
because he's he lived apart from her for a while there were some things that happened and he decided to just leave her for a while for months which is crazy um but um i said i love how their how real their romance was especially considering the times back then the differences between them was a bit of a hindrance but as they began to let go and as sarah opened to god things began to flow and um follow through for them Queen Demospia, love her. She's hilarious. She's very much, like, nosy as hell, but I love her. She's comical to me. Um, the Prophet Nehemiah, like I talked about, I liked him. Secondary characters that I enjoy were Pari, which was, um, Sarah's handmaiden. Bar Bardia, who was the gardener. And then Shushan, I think Shushan, if I'm not mistaken, was the cook. She was a blind cook. Um, but they, those three characters, like, were my favorite. And then you have the antagonist of the story outside of queen mother um this dude named ty ty tespis i don't know he was he worked for um darius at his place but who was he i'll tell you right now the steward of darius's estate and he was a little evil evil thing um i thought queen Demi queen mother was crazy but the steward he was real evil and petty and he did certain things because he knew that darius and sarah were having marital problems so yeah um i did think it was cute that they had a dog i didn't mention that in my review but they did have a dog and the little puppy kind of like bought them two together which was like so cute it's kind of like you know in movies when you have like the guy come back with a puppy and the puppy helps the girl to like fall in love it was kind of like that it was so cute i adored it but i think it was darius that had bought the puppy if i'm not mistaken or was it her that bought the puppy no, it was Darius's dog. Um, Darius had a dog from the beginning of like them being together, and the dog kind of like helped them to get together even more. And it was so cute, and it's just romantic. And I'm gonna stop rambling and making this video super long. But I highly recommend this book, Harvest of Gold. If you Harvest of Rubies, sorry, Harvest of Rubies. If you're looking for a good comical read from Tessa, if you're looking for something more lighthearted, um, I think this is the most lighthearted read outside of Thief of Corinth from Tessa because the other ones deal with some heavy situations. This does deal with some heavy stuff, but um, not super heavy, like at all. Um, definitely deals with some emotional stuff, trust, um, but nothing like extreme, like rape or anything like that. So I highly recommend this book. I love this book to pieces. I'm definitely going to be rereading this um, really soon. Binge reading this probably at the end of the year. I'll binge read it or probably at the beginning of the year. But um. That is it for this review. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys in the next review video. Bye.